Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, there you are right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Well, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, there you are right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Please be near us, clear to the end of our days, precious Lord. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God. We are going through the entire Bible in one year with the one-year Bible version. And so every day you get a little bit of the Old Testament, a little bit of the New, a Psalm, and a Proverb. It is a well-planned spiritual meal is really what it is. And so there's something in it for everyone. God will speak to you in your life in all the good times and in the trying times, okay? So <clears throat> I suggest that you order one, get one, the One Year Bible. And this year we are reading the New King James. No, these are those, the New King James. <clears throat> On this May 29, May 29, here we are at Memorial Weekend and it was always extra special in my house because my mother's birthday was May 30th. And so we always celebrated all of her birthday too, along with the country. We will be reading from 2 Samuel, Shmuel, 2 Shmuel, chapter 14, and moving on into a portion of 15. <clears throat> so let me have one more great sip here, and then it'll go cold. But that's okay, because the Word of God is hot for our souls. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Second Samuel chapter 14. So Jehoab, the son of Zeruiah, perceived that the king's heart was concerned about Absalom. And Joab sent to Tekoa and brought from there a wise woman and said to her, Please pretend to be a mourner and put on mourning apparel. Do not anoint yourself with oil, but act like a woman who has been mourning a long time for the dead. Go to the king and speak to him in this manner. So Joab put the words in her mouth. And when the woman of Tekoa spoke to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and prostrated herself and said, Help, O king! And then the king said to her, What troubles you? And she answered, Indeed, I am a widow. My husband is dead. Now your maidservant had two sons, and the two fought with each other in the field, and there was no one to part them. But the one struck the other and killed him. And now the whole family 
has risen up against your maidservant. And they said, Deliver him who struck his brother, that we may execute him for the life of his brother whom he killed, and we will destroy the error also. So they would extinguish my ember that is left and leave to my husband neither name nor remnant on the earth. And then the king said to the woman, Go to your house, and I will give orders concerning you. <clears throat> and the woman of Tekoa said to the king, My lord, O oh king, let the iniquity be on me and on my father's house, and the king and his throne be guiltless. <clears throat> so the king said, Whoever says anything to you, bring him to me, and he shall not touch you any more. And then she said, Please let the king remember the Lord your God, and do not permit the avenger of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord lives, not one hair of your son shall fall to the ground. Therefore the woman said, Please, let your maidservant speak another word to the Lord my king. And he said, Say on. So the woman said, Why then have you schemed such a thing against the people of God? For the king speaks this thing as one who is guilty, in that the king does not bring back his banished one home again. For we will surely die and become like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Yet God does not take away a life, but he devises means so that his banished ones are not expelled from him. Now, therefore, I have come to speak of this thing to my lord, the king, because the people have made me afraid. And your maidservant said, I will now speak to the king. It may be that the king will perform the request of his maidservant. For the king will hear and deliver his maidservant from the hand of the man who would destroy me and my son together from the inheritance of God. Your maidservant said, the word of my lord the king will now be comforting, for as the angel of God, so is my lord the king in discerning good and evil. And may the Lord your God be with you. And then the king answered and said to the woman, Please, do not hide from me anything that I ask you. And the woman said, Please, let my lord the king speak. So the king said, Is the hand of Joab with you in all of this? And the woman answered and said, As you live, my lord the king, no one can turn to the right hand or to the left from anything that my lord the king has spoken. For your servant Joab commanded me, and he put all these words in the mouth of your maidservant to bring about this change of affairs. Your servant Joab has done this thing. But my lord is wise according to the wisdom of the angel of God, to know everything that is in the earth. And the king said to Joab, All right, I have granted this thing. Go therefore, bring back the young man Absalom. 
And then Joab fell to the ground on his face and he bowed himself and he thanked the king. And Joab said, today your servant knows that I have found favor in your sight. My Lord, O king, <clears throat> in that the king has fulfilled the request of his servant. So Joab arose and he went to Geshur and he brought Absalom to Jerusalem. And the king said, let him return to his own house, but do not let him see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house, but did not see the king's face. <clears throat> now in all Israel, there was no one who was praised as much as Absalom for his good looks. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he cut the hair of his head, at the end of every year, he cut it because it was heavy on him. When he cut it, he weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels, according to the king's standard. To Absalom were born three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of beautiful appearance, and Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem, but did not see the king's face. Therefore Absalom sent for Joab to send him to the king, but he would not come to him. And when he sent again the second time, he would not come. So he said to his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, and he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. And then Joab arose <clears throat> and came to Absalom's house and said to him, Why have your servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, Look, I sent to you, saying, Come here, so that I may send you to the king, to say, Why have I come from Gesher? It would be better for me to be there still. Now therefore, let me see the king's face. <clears throat> but if there is iniquity in me, let him execute me. So Joab went to the king and told him. And when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and he bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. And then the king kissed Absalom. And we move right along <clears throat> to chapter 15. Chapter 15 of 2 Shemuel. After this, it happened that Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Now Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. So it was, whenever anyone who had a lawsuit came to the king for a decision that Absalom would call to him and say, What city are you from? And he would say, your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. And then Absalom would say to him, look, your case is good and right, but there is no deputy of the king to hear you. Moreover, Absalom would say, oh, that I were made judge in the land and everyone who has any suit or cause would come to me then I would give him justice. And so it was, whenever anyone came near to bow down to him, that he would put out his hand and take him and kiss him. In this manner, Absalom acted toward all Israel who came to the king for judgment. 
So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Now it came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said to the king, Please, let me go to Hebron and pay the vow which I made to the Lord, for your servant took a vow while I dwelt at Geshur in Syria, <clears throat> saying, If the Lord indeed brings me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. I think we have massive deceit here. Let's find out. And the king said to him, Go in peace. So he arose and he went to Hebron. And then Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel saying, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigns in Hebron. And with Absalom went 200 men invited from Jerusalem and they went along innocently and didn't know anything. And then Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gilanite, David's counselor from his city, from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices and the conspiracy grew strong for the people with Absalom continually increased in number. Now a messenger came to David saying, the hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. So David said to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, arise and let us flee or we shall not escape from Absalom. Make haste to depart lest he overtake us suddenly and bring disaster upon us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said to the king, We are your servants, ready to do whatever my lord the king commands. And then the king went out with all his household after him. But the king left ten women, concubines, to keep the house. And the king went out with all the people after him and stopped at the outskirts. And then all his servants passed before him and all the Cherethites, all the Pelethites, and all the Gittites, 600 men who had followed him from Gath passed before the king. And then the king said to Ite, Ittai, the Gittite, Why are you also going with us? Return and remain with the king, for you are a foreigner and also an exile from your own place. In fact, you came only yesterday. Should I make you wander up and down with us today? Since I go, I not not where? Return and take your brethren back. Mercy and truth be with you. But Ittai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, surely in whatever place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also your servant will be. So David said to Ittai, Go and cross over. And then Ittai, the Gittite, and all his men, and all the little ones who were with him, crossed over. <clears throat> there you have today's reading. And the sword is still running around in David's family, isn't it? The plots, the hatred. Satan has been let loose for a season. A season. And we will pick up again tomorrow, Lord willing, that we're here. 
All right, we move right along to the Gospel of John in the New Testament, and we are up to chapter 18, chapter 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, and if you didn't, you weren't here for that, oh, I urge you to go back, go back and read the first 18 chapters of John, and it will put all this in perspective for you. He went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. And then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. And Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and they fell to the ground. <laughs> Can you hear all the weapons just clinking and clanking uselessly on the ground? Power went out of Jesus' mouth, didn't it? And at his words, the whole troop of them fell on the ground. And then he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? And they said, I'm sure not quite as confidently, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I have told you, that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled. We're fulfilling prophecy with every single thing that happens. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. And what do you think Judas thought of those words? And then Simon Peter, Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and he struck the high priest's servant, and he cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup? which my father has given me. <clears throat> and then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas, who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Amazing. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. We know who that one is, don't we? Now that disciple was known to the high priest and went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. And then the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. And then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. Denial number one. 
Now the servants and officers who had made a fire of coals stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. And Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always met, always meet. <clears throat> and in secret, I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. And when he had said these things, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? And Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? And then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. And we leave you on that cliffhanger until tomorrow. And I pray that you will make time and come, come back and read along with us. We move right along to Psalm 119, this longest song, uh, psalm of them all. And we are now up to verse 97, 97, Psalm 119, 97. And Melissa has put on there Kathy's graphics. Oh, they are awesome. Please go and visit. Kathy's graphics, she, she searches and she finds them, puts it all together. She's done a lot of work. Thank you, Kathy, so very much. We really appreciate it. They will depict for you. So all that we're reading, go and visit it. All you have to do is touch it. Melissa has put it right on there for you. Psalm 119 has been laid out in sections starting with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and every section goes on to the next Hebrew letter, and we are up to Mem, Mem. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. And we move to the next Hebrew letter, Nun, Nun. And I sang that at the beginning. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O oh Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever. 
for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever, forever, to the very end. And I have too, haven't you? Every day, doing my best to keep his statutes, his ways, the way the Lord would do it. Oh, it's a beautiful way to walk the life that he's given you. Yes, learn his word well and draw upon it every moment. We wrap up today's awesome reading. I mean, this word is just oh, blowing me apart in a good way. We wrap it up with Proverbs, Mishle, chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. Proverbs 16, 8 and 9. Connie's got it right on there for you. Better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues without justice. So true, isn't it? A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. The Lord, if you let him, you can walk against him. But you, you won't end up, you won't end up with all the favor and the good things that you will if you walk and let the Lord direct your steps. And sometimes that means you have to question, you have to say, Lord, where do you want me to go today? What, what do you want me to do? And then listen, listen. If you really mean those questions and you listen, he will direct your heart. He will tell you. He will tell you maybe someone that you've been intending to call for a long time. You just procrastinate. You don't get it done. Who knows what he would tell you. But he will tell you good, constructive things for the kingdom of God. I know that. Well, let's close in prayer. May the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon you all day long, all weekend. Uh, this weekend is more than parties. Spend time, please, in gratefulness and thankfulness for all those who gave their lives in wars and in all kinds of ways for you, that we might have freedom in America. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's pray. Father God, we bless you this day. We give you praise and honor and glory, Lord, for your ways. We hold up Jerusalem, Lord, right, right away. And we'd ask in Jesus' mighty name that you bring peace, that they have peace. Their day is already well started. And Lord, we'd ask that you would bring peace to Jerusalem, to her people, to the whole country, right in the face of enemies. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Lord, I hold up America to you. I hold her up, Lord, and she's got some problems and some troubles, deep ones. But Lord, we want to praise you for revealing hidden evil things. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We have an evil crime family. A couple of them. More than that, but a couple who think they run everything. Don't be deceived. Lord, help us. Help us not to be deceived. Help us to seek out truth in all that's being told by media <clears throat> by those in high places right now who are doing destruction, disastrous things, taking America down. Lord, America is in your hand. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would keep us from the evil one. Keep us from the evil one. Let righteousness 
raise up boldly and bravely in us to speak your word, to lead people to you, to speak truth to the lies. Speak truth. And we know that you bless truth. Father God, many are praying prayers to you for, for loved ones, for situations that are really tough. Lord, many, many different situations. And I'm in agreement with them, Lord, that you bring great answers for them. Please, bring answers. Father God, we'd ask you would keep people safe from harm over this weekend. Lord, I'd boldly ask you to keep them from drinking too much and endangering their own lives. Father God, let's not make it a party. Let's make it a memorial. A memorial. Let's decorate graves. Let's remember those and give thanksgiving that went to wars, that fought hard, gave their life for our freedom. It's a precious gift. And it's all come about from God's mighty hand. So let's praise him and thank him for all these things in Jesus' mighty name. All of God's people agreed with a hearty amen. What, what you agree with and don't agree with what you don't agree with. A hearty amen where you can. And let's go about this day as witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. Love you all. God bless you. Amen. Bye-bye.